Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this session, we would be talking about data, about information, and about the context of data and information, and how all that fits into a system. Now, uh, let's think about what is data and what is information. It's often that those terms are interchanged between one another. We think something is data while it's actually information. We think something is information while it's actually data. Now to make it clear, first uh, let's say we have one number, like the number 15 for instance. 15 is absolutely just data because 15 we don't know what it is. We don't know whether it's about uh, 15 chairs or 15 tables or 15 students, for instance. But now we have here 15 degrees. Now, when we think about whether it's data or information, we should think whether we can understand the meaning of it or not. Just the number 15, we can't understand what it is, so that's data. 15 degrees, can we understand it? Uh, depends on what we mean by degrees. If it's degrees in terms of temperature, okay, so uh, it's how, uh, how many Celsius it is, for, for instance. But it could also be the angle of, of something, the angle of a slope, for instance. So it's still not clear. It's still not understandable. So in that case, it's still data. Now, if we put more attributes to it, it's 15 degrees Celsius. It's not Fahrenheit, it's not Kelvin, it's Celsius. It's, uh, more understandable, but still we are not quite sure what it's about. Is it the temperature of a table or is it the temperature of uh, a drink? Or is it the temperature of, uh, let's say, uh, the floor that we are standing on? Or is it the temperature of the air? Now, this is much more understandable. The weather at 1 p.m. today in Melbourne is 15 degrees Celsius. Now, we know the location, we know the time, and we know the temperature. So, this could be information because we could understand it and uh, th there's some processing in it uh, when, when you take the temperature and so on. And when you put more attributes, uh, there's some processing there. Uh, but it now depends on whether it's useful or not. For me, because I'm not planning to go to Melbourne anytime soon. Well, it's just data. I couldn't follow up on it. It's not useful for me. But for those of you who are planning to go to Melbourne, well, that is information because then there's something you can do with it. It's useful. Let me show another example. The stock price of three companies. You have Telcom 2000, Unilever 1000, Indosat 1750. Let's see. Is this data or is it information? So there has been some processing in it. It has been arranged, arranged into, into a table form. So uh, there's some part of data in it because uh, some part of information because information is actually data that has been processed, has been arranged. So there's an arrangement in the form of a table here. Now, is it meaningful? That's the second attribute of information. Uh, it says Telcom 2000, okay, it must have some meaning in it. But actually, you're not really sure. Because then uh, $2,000 or 2000 rupees, in which stock exchange, you don't know the information also. When is it you don't know the information also. But it now depends on whether it's useful or not also. If 
this were to be shown to a elementary school student. And uh, that student were asked, which is the highest number among the three? Oh, it's 2000, that's the highest number. The lowest number is 1000. And 1750 is lower than 2000. So for that elementary school student, this is information because it's useful. But for us, for students, and even more for stockbrokers, it's not information, it's just data. Now let's take a look at the next one here. It has better attributes, more attributes, even have the Jakarta Stock Exchange stock price. So you know the location, it's Jakarta Stock Exchange. You know the date, it's rather outdated, uh, but it's still probably usable maybe. And then you have the indication that it's in Rupiah. Now for a student to just be able to compare the prices of stock at a particular time in Jakarta Stock Exchange, that's still okay. Because of if your assignment was to compare the prices of uh, the stock between these three companies, it could be information. But for a stock broker, this is still data because to be able to buy and sell stocks, you would need to know the historical data, whether uh, 2000 is expensive or not, we couldn't find out because it's just one moment in time. We need to know what happened in 16 September 17, and then also January, February, and uh, March, and so on. And even then, you still need to know the balance sheet of that company. You need to know the, what's happening in the environment, whether there are changes in uh, the use of telecommunications that would increase the benefits of using telecom, for instance. Now, for a stockbroker, you need more than this for it to become information. So from here, we can see that information actually really depends on the user. Who's using it? Is it an elementary school student? Is it a high school or a graduate student? Or is it a stockbroker, for instance? Now, uh, since what we are making should be something useful, so the, the, the basic thing that you'd be making, of course, is uh, a database. But the database eventually should be able to be processed, should be able to be made into information that's useful for a user. So when we do develop a database, we have to make sure that the database is the correct uh, data that's needed for further processing. Here we see that data are streams of raw facts representing events occurring in organizations or the physical environment before they have been organized and arranged into a form that people can understand and use. And on the other side, information that is data that has been shaped into a form that is meaningful and useful. So there are three attributes here, organized and arranged, meaningful and useful for it to become information. And then from a wider perspective, the data and information would be used in an information system. But first, of course, a system would be a set of interrelated components that work together to achieve some common purpose. Any system would be like that. Your digestive system, for instance, uh, would consist of several components. Uh, for instance, the tongue, the throat, the stomach, the intestines, the anus, and so on. And those components are interrelating with one another. If one component uh, fails to work, for instance, you have a sore throat, then it's hard for you to swallow food, and then the whole system breaks down. And the system has one common purpose. For, uh, for, for instance, transforming chemical energy into kinetic energy. That's for a digestive system. But for an information system, those components might uh, consist of, let's say, hardware, software, database systems, 
operating systems, uh, network systems, and so on, working together for what? To collect, this is data collection, trying to get data from uh, the environment or from inside of the company, put it into the uh, database, and then further processing in the information system. So the database would be used to, uh, to store. First, data is collected, and then data is stored into the database. And then it could also be processed in a simple database system, but more processing would be done in the information system itself. And then uh, in comes data, out comes information. That's why information is disseminated to support decision making. It could be for coordination, control, analysis, and visualization in an organization. Now, when we collect and store data, we have to make sure that the data that we collect and store is feasible to be able to be processed uh, after that and then disseminated in, in the form of information. So the data should be accurate, the data should be timely, and the data should be uh, valid. It would be showing the real conditions of what we are trying to capture there. And then from a wider perspective even, we would be seeing information systems, which the core would be a database, as an organizational and management solution. So uh, there would be a problem first in the organization and the organization would have to identify what are the causes of the problem and how do you solve that problem? Now, from a business perspective, this problem would be solved using information systems based on information technology here to a challenge posed by the environment. Now, of course, there would always be uh, three parts of an information system. The input, which is data, could be from inside the organization or outside of the organization. There's processing and there's output. As you can see here, you have data here. You still can't understand what it is. For instance, what is 331? What is 129? And why is bright dish soap mentioned three times here? What does it show? What data is, is it? We still don't know. And then using an information system, it could be arranged into this form. This form becomes more useful, becomes more meaningful, and thus it is information. You have the sales region, uh, the Northwest, at Superstore 122. So you know the location of the store, you know the store number, now you can see that 331 is actually the product ID or the item number. Uh, this is actually uh, the soap uh, is the product. And then you have 7,156 as the number of units sold, meaning that actually in the whole database, you have bright dish soap mentioned seven times more, 7,000 times. And then year-to-date sales, 9,231. So that means 1.29 is the price because if you multiply this times the unit sold, you get this sales value. And now from an even wider perspective, you can see this is data as input. You do some processing here. Uh, you do tabulation, for instance. Uh, you do calculations with a certain formula and out comes information as output. And then there could be a feedback, which for instance is used to verify the output. Or it could be sent to a higher level system. The first part would be just a reporting system. 
uh, the higher level system might be a system used for making decisions, for instance. It could, it could go also to another system. Output of one system could go out as input to another system. And you can see here, there are in, uh, data that could be captured from the environment. Data from suppliers, data from customers. It could be from the other governmental agencies, stockholders, competitors. So this could be data that could be input into the system as well as data from inside of the company as well. Now, when we build a database in this part here, okay, we have to make sure that what we put into the database is adequate enough to be processed and then to be made into information that is useful and meaningful. So that's the uh, main uh, purpose of designing a database. I hope this gives a better understanding of the context of data, information, systems, and also uh, databases in a systems. Thank you and wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.